Good morning, we're back for another in-session film live for the Carp Academy cameras. Choosing venues has been quite tricky recently just because of the water levels are so low on so many lakes that I had earmarked now that um, not only would the fishing be difficult but we want the lakes to look really good for you guys to see and a lot of them are just mud flats going out for a long way now. So. We've had a recalibration and we've got an invitation to a small syndicate down in the depths of Essex and we want to show you guys you know, how, how we go about catching carp on a variety of different lakes, hopefully. Um, and that includes day ticket lakes, uh, includes pressured club lakes and will include a few syndicates along the way. And this is the first syndicate that we've come to film on. So we've got about five acres of water here there are about 100 or so fish in the lake. And this lake contains not only some of the oldest fish in Southeast England, but some of the oldest living carp in the whole of the UK. Now that of course is immensely exciting. Really, really old, crusty, gnarly carp that have just been trapped in time. There's some newer, younger fish. Uh, you've got to give injections of, of new blood, obviously, but some of the old fish in there, I don't know how many still remain out of those hundred. There might only be 10 or something like that, but trust me, if we were lucky enough to catch one of those, and I've seen some pictures, it would, it would probably be certainly one of the greatest carp that I've ever caught, whether it's 22 pound or 25 pound, they're quite incredible. So there's a chance of meeting one of those guys. We've got some older fish, uh, sorry, not older, we've got some bigger fish, which are slightly younger, uh, which have pushed 40 pound now. I think the late record has gone 45 pounds. So there's a couple of 40s in here, uh, a few 30s. And as I said, whether they're the old crusty ones or whether they're some of the newer, younger fish, they do all look quite exceptional. And that's largely down to the environment they're living in. So the lake is very, very weedy. It's very clear, snaggy in places. There's a few islands, there's reed beds, little alcoves, overhangs, there's an awful lot going on, which makes it very, very interesting. It's a bit of a challenge to me. I've never caught a fish from this lake. I have fished it once before. Uh, I came here end of November last year and I did a bit of filming for Joe Morgan for his program and uh, on Carp Angle. And we both fished, it was freezing cold and neither of us caught anything. It was brutal, it went down to well below zero at night and the lake hasn't got tremendous winter form. So we probably both bit off a bit more than we could chew there. As I said, we didn't catch anything and that's the only time that I've been here. So, you know, I love a challenge, but at the same time, I'm thinking, well, you know, if we keep rolling the dice on these challenges for Carp Academy, at some point we're gonna stumble. But I'm man enough to take that on. It's real world carp fishing. Again, no favours granted, no preferentials, no roped off rubbish, no pre-baited anything. We're turning up cold and it is cold today. Four degrees it was reading at my home up in Suffolk when I came down. I could still see my breath coming out in clouds. Ian, my cameraman behind there, is, is uh, much hardier. He hasn't even got socks on. He's got trainers and shorts and a t-shirt. So but then when you get older like me, you feel, feel the cold. So yeah, the weather's changing now. We're into October and we've had a lot of nights that have gone down into single figures. So the water is really cooling off a lot quicker than it ha has done, excuse me, in more recent years when we've been treated to more of an extended Indian style summer. This year, we've gone straight from summer, bang into the middle of autumn. In fact, it feels like a month advanced really on what it normally is. So we've had a lot of cold nights, four degrees, that's enough to give a little bit of frost in some places. I know some people have said they've had frost on their bivvies already. Early October, that's quite rare. So we're up, we wouldn't say we're up against it, you know. I'm, I'm thinking we can catch one, maybe two fish on this trip. I'd be very happy with that, you know, to go away with a couple of fish. How are we gonna fish it? Again, because I don't really know the lake and I've not caught from here, I need to be prepared. So I've got, in my armory in the van, I've got some boilies. I've got some good old Manila active boilies. I've got some particle, I've got a bucket of hemp. Um, I've got a few tiger nuts and I've also got some maggots and casters. So I'm not sure what we're gonna use yet or what we're gonna employ. It will be a bit different to what you've seen me doing on previous Carp Academy films in terms of the bait. I don't think it's gonna be straight boilie fishing. And I'm gonna get into the whole topic of autumn carp fishing for you guys because now is the time where a lot of people see these fizzing 
uh, areas from carp feeding all the time. Getting bites off them can be really problematic and that is something we're really going to get into later on in the programme. Why that's going on, what the carp are doing and how we can try and get bites in those situations. I strongly suspect that we're going to have to do something down the route away from normal boiler fishing to get a bite from these very special carp. Anyway, I've been waffling on far too long. I want to carry on having a walk round, see what's going on and make a decision on where we're going to fish. So this morning, as I always do when I'm going carp fishing, if it's possible, you know, notwithstanding school runs and other things you get in normal life with responsibilities, I do try and get to the lake as early as I can, whatever time of year I'm going fishing. So I got here before it got light this morning and had a good walk around, had a good look around just at that prime time, you know, when the sun's just beginning to crest in the distance and it's always the best time to find fish. You will find that as you go more into the autumn and you pass the equinox as we have now, that carp activity becomes very focused on the nocturnal side of things. And it's the one time of year where seeing fish at first light diminishes and stays like that for sometimes for a month or two. And then as you get into the winter, sometimes you know, on those frosty mornings, you can see them roll. But right now, it can be very tricky to see carp showing at first light. And the reason for that is simply because, as I said, the fish are so nocturnal, they'll be boshing and rolling and, and being super active all night. By the time it gets light, it's like when you've been clubbing all night, you've just gone home, is it getting light and you just want to go to sleep? And it's all like the, the activity's just diminished and the carp are just chilling out, they've had enough. So it can really, really pay to be on your toes during the darkness. We're going to be looking at that again as we go through the session. I wasn't necessarily expecting to see anything. And with only two nights that we're going to film for, I was a little bit worried that I might not be able to find the fish until well into tonight, you know, which is like half the session's almost gone. As it was, walking around early this morning, I did see some activity. And I'm pretty sure that the activity that I saw, if I'd been here at three in the morning or at midnight, that would have been amplified tenfold probably, you know, so I've seen five carp this morning, all in one particular area, which is brilliant. The last thing you want to see is a fish in one corner, one in the middle, one over, you know, when they're spread out thin. All the fish that I've seen have been in one area, which we're going to have a look at shortly. I watched, watched and, and stood and watched the fizzing and, and all the activity while it was going on. It dissipated and died off very quickly, probably had about 45 minutes or so after first light, nothing. So it paid off getting there earlier and that's given me a good indication of where I need to be fishing. But as you can see, a beautiful looking lake with islands and reeds and weed and all sorts of stuff going on. I really do like the look of this swim. And if I hadn't seen any fish, I probably would have come in here, but I've seen five or six fish down there. That is, that's everything, you know, to see carp and being able to move on them is all you need. So we've got something to build on already, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to, um, have a bit of a nose around again because it still feels nice and early, but 99% sure where I need to be. I'm going to have a quick check and then I'm going to start getting the gear down and we're going to look at how we're going to start trying to catch a carp from this amazing lake. Now we've come into an area which caught my interest as a potential fishing area before we had a good look at it. And that's purely because it faces south. Now as the water temperature starts to drop away in the autumn, you will find carp, just like cats will find the warmest part of the windowsill in the house, will seek out areas that get the sunshine and the strength and the warmth throughout the period at that time during the day. It's not necessarily where they're gonna feed at night, but they can be very, very good spots for a day bite. And not long after walking into the swim and feeling the warmth and undoing my jacket and thinking, cool, this is lovely. There was a great big carp just off the weed, bang on the surface, just gently wafting his fins, sunbathing, enjoying the sun, you know. It's, it's always worth bearing in mind. So right now, you know, a lot of people do posit the question, we're in October, we're going in, into the cold weather, should I start fishing the deeper parts of my lake? And should I start targeting the silty troughs and so on and so forth? Well, always remember that carp are wild animals. Carp will only be where they want to be. They're not governed by any rules that we try to put on their behavior. I could right now think I've got a load of geese that time of year. They're all flying 
west. Um, it's that time of year now where I could think of probably three lakes I know where yes, the carp have already moved into the deeper silter areas and you see them fizzing up as they're harvesting all the naturals. But I can also think of another three, including one I went to last week, where they're very much on the shallows and the old weed beds and feeding on the food there. So there aren't any rules, there's only generalisation. So always think of that. The only thing that should govern where you're gonna fish for carp on your session is where you have seen carp activity, not based on guessing or supposition because life's too short to fish on guesswork um, in my opinion always try and fish where you've seen carp as it is we've seen a fish in this swim there's a few bubbles on the surface it's getting the sun my bet is that there'll be fish coming in and out of here throughout the day today i'm more interested in the area where i told you i'd seen six fish show because that's where they were feeding at first light and that's where i think is our best chance for a bite at the same time tomorrow morning but these little sun traps, as the temperatures fall away, even if they're shallow, always give them a good, good checking over to see if the carp are around them. So this is the area that I've earmarked. It's pretty evident from what I've seen this morning that the majority of fish activity, not just carp, is focused in this part of the lake. And I've had a good look at all the other bays and the alcoves. And not only have all the carp that I've seen roll been here but it seems to be a focal point for everything else as well seen a tench roll seen a lot of roach activity and it just seems alive with fish generally and standing in all the other parts of the lake i've not seen any of that going on not in fact not even a bubble in some parts of it at all in fact the only fish that i saw when i was over the other side was when i was looking back across here and i saw two big swells at the same time just as the mist was clearing again in this zone uh, there's a big area of fish come up there that's the area so what you, you whenever you see something you want to earmark it line it up and take careful note of where it is that's a carp definitely a carp um, big big sheet of, you know it could be a fish that's plowing pluming, pluming through the the blanket weed and the seal or it could be a fish that's flanked along the bottom on its side but that's a carp definitely and as i said you know this although this area of what looks like deeper water remember i don't know the lake may not be good for a daytime bite during the day in the autumn day bites are not usually your bread and butter anyway as i said no nocturnal activity is the name of the game and if we're going to get fish i'm expecting them to be either during darkness or in the very first part of the morning tomorrow morning and in my general experience if carp are very very fixated on an area and you let them feed there leave them alone until they drift away there's no reason for them not to come back same time tomorrow o'clock so this is the area all six carp that i've seen show have been in here and that fizzing it looks absolutely game on. I'm gonna go and get the gear and then we're gonna look at how we're gonna attack the swim.